G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing. If fly fishing is something you want to get into, you want to do a course with us. We'll take you up to New G and we'll teach you how to catch trout. $99, get in touch with us and we'll teach you how to be a superstar fly fisher. G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to our On The Fly Beginners DVD. What we're going to do is to, to show you the, the basics of fly casting. So you can watch a DVD and put those techniques into practice and you're going to be halfway there. We'll also show you how to catch some fish and the different techniques you're going to need to use to be successful on the water. Now it's pretty important that you get things right from the start. The grip's very important. Uh, the, the fat part of the, uh, the cork I like to have it right in the palm of my hand and I like to steer things and get all the power from my thumb. That's a real driving force of the whole rod. Uh, some prefer with their lighter stuff to use their, their little finger or there's a few others that like to even turn it uh, sideways. Whatever suits you and performs best is fine, but personally I prefer the thumb. Also I like to, to be side on when I'm casting. That's how you're going to get a lot of your movement as you're casting as well and a lot more of your rhythm. So get that right at the start and you're going to cast a lot more successfully. So the most important thing of the whole casting is the stopping. So we're going back, stop, forward, stop, and that really sets everything up for your release cast. Most important, that stop, all that power that you've put into the rod, once you stop, puts it into the line. That gets you all your distance and really loads it up for your presentation to where the fish are. Very important, get that right, you're gonna be successful. You quite often hear about people talk between 10 and 2. That's where you want your rod to be going. We don't really want it going from 9 till 3 because that gets, gives you a much bigger arc and you just don't have all that power to shoot that line in one direction. So uh, we're getting back to there just in those shorter little arcs with that pause in the middle and that's how you're going to get a really nice tight loop and a good directional cast. Right, so our back cast goes to there, stops and then comes back down. And that's essentially all it is. We just need to go back, pause for a second, forward for a second, and straight back down. And that's going to load the rod and shoot it out. What we're aiming for is very tight little uh, loops. And what that does, you can imagine if you're throwing a dart, it's going to go very straight line because you're pushing it forward with all the, the maximum um, force um. going that way. And when we're talking about loops, we're imagining something like that, a nice tight little loop. So that's where all that force is going to go in a nice little straight line. So we want very tight little loops and that's going to allow your fly line to get much further, much faster, particularly if there's a bit of wind around. Now a much bigger loop is something like that. You can imagine using a much bigger arc without any stops uh, and that's going to put force up, down, sideways, all around and you're not going to get that real force and direction where you need to go. So get a much tighter loop with a nice little arc with that pause and you can cast a lot better, a lot easier. Now putting that stop principle together, what we don't want to see is a constant movement. Uh, and that tends to happen when you're using too much wrist. So we don't want really big loops like that. Now one of the big problems we see with beginners is they use too much wrist at the start. What we also have, we have a casting aid, and that literally locks the, uh, the butt of the fly rod onto your, your wrist there and keeps it very stiff, so you're not using too much wrist. So there's something you can buy, like little training wheels to get you started and get you using like the correct casting arc until you get the hang of it by yourself. So a cast is made up of two casts, a back cast, a pause, forward cast, pause, and literally lay your rod down. And that's gonna cast 20, 30 feet. And that's where you're gonna catch a lot of your fish. So you don't always need to be casting 70, 80 feet you're going to catch a lot of fish, even literally at a couple of rod lengths away. So if you can get this right to start with, you're going to be successful. Back cast, forward cast, and just come down with the line. And that's going to give you a really good presentation to deceive these fish. So once you've got the back cast, forward cast down, Pat, what we also have is what we call a false cast. And that's literally just keeping the line up in the air. So we'll do that for a couple of reasons. The same technique, get to that one, one false cast and just come down with it. 
that can do a few things. If you've got a dry fly, a couple of casts like that's going to dry it out and put it back on the water and float really well. You can also use that to gain a little bit of extra distance. As you go, you can let out a little bit more line and that can give you like a greater distance to cast a lot further. So shooting line is how we get all our distance. And it doesn't mean that you have a lot of line aerialized all at once. It's just at the end, when you've got a little bit of line out, you allow that line to literally pull all the spare line that you've got. Much the same as if you had a lure or a sinker on a normal spinning rod, you would cast it and that would pull the line out. The same with a fly rod, because all we're casting is actually the line itself. And when it comes to shooting line, it's gotta be the last thing you do is let that line go. So we need that rod to be loaded and then stopped, and then you let that line go. So we just false cast, get to there, and then let that pull all that line out, and that's how you're gonna get all your distance. Now presentation's a term that we use a lot in fly fishing. What it uh, involves too, this fly line is gonna go exactly where I stop this tip. So if I'm going right up in the air, that's where the line's gonna go. If I'm coming all the way down, that's where the line's gonna go. If it's too low, it's gonna splat on the water. If it's too high, it's just gonna fade you know, with the wind on its way down. So what we need is somewhere in the middle where that line is gonna straighten out, lose all its energy, and you can imagine like a, a, a tiny little beetle or something like that is literally gonna flutter down. And that's the presentation that we want with, with a fly. So all that involves is literally going to a place in about the middle where it allows the line to straighten out and then just flutter down without any energy. And that's gonna literally put that fly as naturally on the water to a fish as can be. So we're aiming too high, the line's literally gonna come down in a bit of a puddle on itself. If we aim too low, the line is literally gonna splat on the water and literally frighten the fish. So we need somewhere in the middle. Straighten out about eye level, lose all its energy and just flutter back down. Now another cast that we use a lot, particularly in the river system, is a roll cast. You can imagine if we had big trees or, or a cliff behind us, we can't get a back cast because you're going to just get tangled up. So what we do is we use the water to load the rod and put a bend in it and literally just shoot it forward as a normal cast. If you can imagine our fly line becomes the, uh, the, the um, half circle of a D and the rod is your straight section. What we want to do is to get that, the, um, the water to load the rod you can imagine there's the D, pause, and literally go into a forward cast. And that's going to shoot that fly line out to where the fish are without needing a back cast. Also, if you need to cast on the other side, just tilt the rod on that side and turn that over. So you can literally cast on either side here, depending on which side of the river the fish are. Now another cast very similar to that, if you've got something behind you uh, that you can't get a normal back cast which is perhaps level, it's called a steeple cast. And when we speak about like the 10 and 2, we've literally got to alter that. So you know it might be 9 you know, and, and 12 o'clock. You've got to throw that line up high above whatever's you know, your obstruction there. And that's pretty simple, you just throw it up high and then down low. So you're throwing it up and then down low. So you still can get that presentation out in front of you without getting hooked up behind you. That's called a steeple cast. Throw it up high, and then down low. Sometimes as well you might be fishing in a river system that has quite a few currents. So what we need to do is put some slack into the line itself as it drifts back towards you. A good way of doing that is called a wiggle cast. So we literally, a normal cast, but as it's in the air, you literally wiggle the rod. And that puts a whole lot of uh, wiggle through the line so as it drifts back towards you you're not going to get any drag and it's going to be a great presentation. Uh, now another type of cast you can imagine if you're on a river uh, and you've got maybe some overhanging trees you can't do an up and down cast because you're not going to get under them and trout 
and any fish for that matter, will sit under them because a lot of uh, beetles and bugs are going to fall in at various times. So what we need to do is get our fly right in amongst those trees. So what we need to do is literally just turn our rod to the side um, and just cast underneath. And that's going to put the, uh, the fly line literally level with the water and you can get right down low to where the fish are going to be looking for their food to come from. So for that low cast, perfect. Everything just stays the same. You're still using the same arcs, the same paws. You're just turning that rod on the side. There'll be different times of a river you need to be casting to different sides. You've got a couple of options. You can either learn to cast right-handed and left, which a lot of really good anglers do, or you can simply just turn the rod on either side. So as a right-hander, I'm normally over my right side, but I can also just literally throw it over my left shoulder and get a completely different angle to it. So uh, that can really open up a river to be casting on both sides. Now there'll be times on a river where you're going to have some obstructions behind you that you really need to keep an eye on, which is pretty difficult when you've got a fish rising in front of you. So what you need to do is literally be watching your cast behind you more than in front of you. So you're literally going backwards and forwards, watching where your line is so it's not going to get tangled, and then casting forward to where you know the fish is. But alternative two is to literally turn around and cast backwards and once you get there you know exactly that your line is not going to hook up to a tree or anything like that and then literally just throw it over your shoulder to where the fish is and turn around get him to take it hook it and you're a champion now when we're using one fly we can get a very uh, tight loop which is very good for distance and accuracy once you use two flies, which is something that you will use a lot once you get the, the hang of the, the casting and stuff, and quite often you might have a, a dry with a nymph dropper or even like two nymphs. It's very important you need to open up your arc a little bit more to allow both flies to straighten out before you're going forward. And that's simply a matter of just pausing a little bit longer and using a little bit more wrist once you get the hang of it. So it just opens it up, gives you a slightly bigger loop and just allows those two flies to both roll out and turn over without tangling. When you're fishing a river or a lake, uh, the line's going to sit on the water and be hard to pull up, particularly when you've got a big line on. What we like to do, and it's a very subtle way of getting that fly line off the water, is give it a wiggle, and that pulls that line off the surface, lets uh, the tension go, it makes it much easier to lift off. So uh, you've got a big line out, give it a bit of a wiggle before you pull it up, and you're ready to go again. Particularly important if you're chasing smelting fish, we've got a quick cast in, in different areas. It's a great way to get your fly out there much, much faster. Now, if you come across a few problems when you're out fishing yourself, one of them will be that the line's all coming down on itself and that will be because you're not stopping the rod. You're coming all the way down and it literally, that line's gonna go where you stop that rod tip. So if you bring it all the way down near the water, that's gonna pull all the line straight down and it'll land in a puddle and not turn over. So if you find yourself doing that, bringing it down, just make sure, remember that stop. You get that right, that'll fix everything. So to get there, stop, that'll allow it to turn over and present much, much better. Now another problem that beginners have is they use too much wrist at the start and a continuous movement without the stop. So if you just find you're using really big arcs, you're getting much um, bigger loops and you're not going to get any distance and it's going to land in a puddle and not really go anywhere. So just remember, either use that training aid that we have for your casting or just try and lock that wrist in a, a little bit firmer and put that power into the rod and it's going to transfer to the line. So uh, there's always going to be things, you're not going to pick it up straight away with everything, but just persist or come into you know, our shop and we can sort of help you out as well and uh, point you in the right direction. Because once you get the hang of this fly rod, you're going to catch a lot more fish and have a real lot of fun. Now we're going to start off with a dry fly. Now that can imitate 
uh, perhaps a nymph that swam to the surface hatched out and turned into a dun or a mayfly. Um, it could be like something that's jumped in from, from the land, whether it be a grasshopper, a cricket or a moss or something like that. And it, essentially something that's just going to float. This will essentially absorb water over time. So what we do is we put on a silicon, uh, a floatant, and that literally coats it and scotch guards it for want of a better word and just makes it float for a lot longer. Uh, and what we'll do, as you can imagine with a little fly like this, we've got to put movement into that that would happen naturally. So with a tiny little mayfly, that would actually just float with the current. If it was a grasshopper, it might kick its legs a little bit. But you want to impose about the same sort of movement as would naturally. The trout are going to be facing upstream. So we're going to cast that fly upstream and that's going to drift back towards where the fish is. And a couple of things to remember once we do that. It's called line management. This is very important. It's all well and good having great casting and all that sort of stuff. But once that fly hits the water, that's when the real action starts and it's imperative that you do things properly. So what we need to do, if a fish takes that, if you're using a worm for example, he put it in his mouth and he'll realise that's food and he'll eat it. With a fly, he'll realise pretty quickly that that's a bit of metal and fur and feather and he's not going to eat it and he'll spit that back out. So what we need to do is set the hook pretty well straight away. So as soon as that goes in that fish's mouth, we've got to lift the rod, not like a big snapper strike, but literally just lift it, maybe your foot, until that line's tight and that will set the hook and you're ready to play that fish. All right, now when we cast out, upstream, and that's gonna drift back towards us. Now, over, depends on how fast the water's going, but very quickly, that line is gonna bunch up right down at the end of my rod tip. So if a fish is to take that now, I can, I've got to lift before I'm even moving the flight. All that sort of distance before that set the hook. And that, for a trout, is enough time for it to spit it. So what we, we need, it's called line management. And I've got to get that line inside of these guides before uh, the fish takes that fly. So it's simply a matter of casting out. You want the rod tip right low by the water. And any slack build up, you're going to pull that in through your fingers here. So as soon as that fish takes, you lift that rod like maybe a foot and you've set the hook already. So uh, this pays to be ready when that fish does take. Good. That's good when a plan comes together and that fish likes it. He's a, oh, that's got a bit of power in that. There's a lot of rocks and everything over that side. Got to try and, uh, he was a bit surprised when there was a hook in that done. We could be in a little bit of strife there if he goes, and I can't turn him from that. So we, all we've got to do is hold that rod up high and try and avoid some of these rocks. And we're in a little bit of strife downstream. And here we go. <laughs> it's got a bit of power. I'll just try and get him out of this main current. Good fish, good bit of go in it. We can keep him out of that current and we're all right. Nice big head on him too. He's, uh, he's good. Make sure he's in the net. And then we're all set. Four and a quarter. I wonder a bit of grief. Once they get in that fast current, there's not much you can do. You've just got to go with them. If you can just see, that's a typical Mac Brown. What we'd normally do, you've probably seen uh, as well on a few of our other shows, where well, we'll put things into a grid system. So uh, we would look at a certain area and, and perhaps start it over there and let it drift down through one little area. And if, if that doesn't hold a fish that's come up to strike, we might cast another foot to the right, to the right, to the right, and just work your way along so you're covering all sections of the river. And then you might take another couple of metres further upstream and then cast again. So you're really putting your fly over all parts of the river and giving every fish that's there a chance to eat your fly. Now another thing I want to show you too is, is what we'll call drag and that's if your fly is moving faster than the actual current it will actually drag along the top and uh, an interesting way to see it is you'll have what we call a V behind your fly 
and that's literally um, where it, it is skating across the top of the surface and is very unnatural and a fish won't eat it. Generally the cause of that is if you have like lots of uh, big currents or if your fly line gets below your rod. So you can see if that all builds up and the current pushes the line and that will essentially drag that fly much faster than the current. And you get essentially it'll either drag it under or get that V behind it. Trout are very cautious and they know when something's wrong, they know to be frightened. So if they, they do get a V like that, that's they're not going to eat it. You're going to frighten it. An easier way of doing it, if you are coming across there like that, it's called a mend. So what we can do is throw the line back up above the rod. And then you can just drag in that slack and that will give that a much more natural drift. And to the fish anyway, give you more chance to come up and eat that. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. And you could just look up next to that log, you could see a lovely bit of water. And um, yeah, he took that like he had all day to take it. It's a lovely little rainbow. And he's a lovely, uh, a lovely fish. The beauty of that dry, uh, they rarely refuse it. So um, yeah, you'll hear me talk about it a, a bit. A uh, royal rubber leg stimulator. And it certainly works on the Stevie. You know, we're just going to fish a nymph, so that's a beaded nymph uh, with a little gold bead head. When the water's a bit discoloured or early in the season, I like to use a gold bead to make it sink and give a little bit of flash. Later on in the year or when the rivers are very clear, I'd go to a black bead, perhaps even a tungsten. Now, you can put this to any depth that you want this fly to go. I'll just go a couple of feet. Uh, and I'm going to put on here just a little stick-on indicator. Very basic, very easy to use indicator. It indicates to us when a fish takes this fly or if you can imagine even if you were bait fishing it's almost like a little float so when that goes sideways or down or, or just stops it's because a fish has got that in his mouth and then you strike set the hook and away you go so uh, you fish it the same way as you would a dry by casting that upstream letting it drift naturally as you can imagine that's not going to be able to uh, an animal of that size not swim very strongly so it'll go with the current and wait for a fish to put that in his mouth and then we'll hook him Same principle applies, let that float down. I want that to be very natural. And as soon as that moves, you've got to set the hook very quickly with the, uh, once they take nymphs. Because there's a delayed reaction between that indicator going down and you reacting as well. So, uh, well, I, don't, I don't think you could ever be too, too fast when you strike with a, uh, a nymph and an indicator. And just a nice little fish there and that's what it's about you're just throwing that up upstream letting that drift back towards you and just wait for any movement on that uh, indicator and uh, it's an amazingly effective way to fish like trout will probably eat about 80 90 percent under the surface so they're always going to be, be feeding and uh, it just makes good reason to put what they're going to be eating on most of the time in front of them and that's worth it just a nice little nice little rainbow and uh, be a good couple of pounds, but just great fun. And in a place like this, it, it's really good practice for you as well. So, um, I mean, I'm not asking you to come here if you've been fishing for 25 years, but a good place to practice catching fish and putting the techniques that you're learning and perfecting on the rivers into practice here. You'd be surprised at how good you get at catching these trout. And we talk about netting a lot too, and it's uh, you literally just got to tie that fish out, and we want his head to be up out of the water, and they lose. Uh, a lot of their power, obviously, if there's heads out and uh, lead him to the net and lift him in there. But a nice little rainbow and just good fun to catch. And that nymph just works a treat. That's a lovely little fish. You can imagine in the Goulburn or the Rubicon, perfect size. And uh, yeah, just don't get tired of catching. Uh, any fish on a fly is good. Yep, there. Uh, 
back eddy there where a tree's fallen in the water and just off that main current and that's always worth a cast and um, that's good when you always got to have a plan and when it works out that that uh, yeah makes a lot more fun and uh, he's taken the nymph even though there's plenty of uh, insects about the, that dry and a nymph cocktail is just a brilliant way to go and uh, it just doubles your chances and he's a nice little brown so this now I'm just half a pound but on that lightweight gear is just great fun and uh, beautiful red spots just characteristic just a wonderful fish to target in in terrific surroundings and he's good to go Now we've seen a, a dry fly, which is a, a very visual way to do, and I think one of everybody's favourites, uh, a nymph under an indicator, which is very successful. Another way to fish a nymph is without an indicator, and literally in a river system you might cast down and across and let the current do the work, or in a lake, virtually just out and just cover the water. But you need to maintain contact with it to know when a fish has got it. A couple of ways of doing that, either just short, tiny little strips, you can imagine a nymph would just do in little darty movements, or what they call a figure eight retrieve. And as you can imagine, just pulling the line through the fingers in there, and that literally puts the line in the figure eight. You can just drop that or use that to cast. But essentially all you're doing is just maintaining contact. So when that fish takes, you can set the hook straight away. Another thing to remember too, is we always drag that line through our top fingers. So that if the fish takes at any stage, we can just tighten up here on the, um, the grip on the rod, and then we've got a tight line, and then we can lift the rod and set the hook he's got no chance of getting away. There we go. And sometimes, oh, good aerial little fish. And they're just good fun. I mean, they're uh, just a couple of pound. But we always say when you are stripping line in, you've got to maintain a bend on that rod. And that uh, certainly makes him fight against the rod before he's fighting against your tippet. If you get him on a straight pull, He's got a lot of things in his favour. So get that bend in the rod and make him work hard against your rod. With smaller fish like this or in a lake, it doesn't really matter. I will always strip the line just through my fingers. Uh, but if you're in, say, New Zealand or something like that, that's when you really need all this slack line to be not dragging around your feet or on rocks. So you want that wound up, ready to you know, chase him downstream and things like that. But it's really a great way to pick up a fish fishing a nymph without an indicator. You cover a lot of water and it's a very successful way of uh, fishing and uh, some pretty good rewards with it too. We'll just get him back and good to go. So what we've got to finish off with um, as part of our, 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 our trout system is what we call a streamer. Uh, and that will imitate to a fish anyway. A, perhaps a, a yabby or a mud eye or a little minnow, just something quite big and large and getting away. So um, you can imagine like the darting motion that a, perhaps a mud eye would have. So we'll cast that out, let that sink a little bit, and we're doing it in 10 to 15 centimetre strips. And you can imagine pull, pull, and then pause, pull, pull. And that just has a, uh, imparts a lot of action on quite a big fly. And that will attract fish, you know, from a considerable distance away because it's worth the effort because it's such a sizable uh, uh, bit of food for them. So we let that sink and you have different retrieve methods. Sometimes they need something much faster and that really excites them um, and takes away a lot of their choice. We want them to react to it rather than have to think about it. So uh, just vary your retrieve and also your casting area. You don't want to be casting it to exactly the same spot each time. So you would normally, as we talk about a fan, and you would cover as much area as you can until you actually see a fish. You might go out and see a rising fish and cast to it straight away. Uh, but if there's nothing moving, it doesn't actually mean there's no fish there, it just means that you can't see them because they're not feeding near the surface. So get that. Now a woolly bugger or a smelt fly is gonna be a fly that moves a lot of water and creates a bit of disturbance. So the way you fish it, is, is cast perhaps 45 degrees down and just you can almost let the the river do the work so that's swinging at the moment they'll come up and down so what we'll do with this woolly bug we'll throw it downstream let that swing you want to maintain contact the fish is virtually going to hook himself so you're doing little strips and that'll just get it to to jump around and, and the fish will see it's getting out of its uh, grasp and it, he'll jump onto it and just a matter of putting it in front of a fish 
Yeah. Finally, I knew it'd work eventually. There's, uh, I've had a couple of little taps we had earlier, and uh, you can just feel that tap, and then it's good to lift the rod, and there's a fish on the end of it. A, a black beadhead woolly bugger, and swinging it in so that and coax him into the, sh the sh slower water here. Might be a lot easier to, to play. He hasn't come up yet. Oh, come on, mate. Head first. Beautiful. There you go. So that's what happens when you fish a woolly bugger and put it in front of a, uh, a lovely rainbow. We get four and a quarter at the butchers, so that's pretty good. That's on the McLean's... Um, lie detector so that tells the truth just in beautiful nick and that's what you come to New Zealand for a fish like that and there's ones way over 10 pound in here which this one will get to eventually I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing we specialise in guided tours throughout Victoria but we also take groups to Alaska, Chile, bone fishing Christmas Island and our most popular one New Zealand so if that's where you want to go come in and see us at our stores in Bentley and Lumsden <laughs>